Don't you find it confusing having to use different units of measurement depending on where you're located? Let me give you an example. Imagine that you are in the United States, where if you will need to measure the length of a random object, you'll use the words foot or inch. But in most of the countries of the world, you'll use the metric system, including words like meters and kilometer. And despite the fact that only three countries in the world use the foot unit, it is still very important to be familiar with the system. So what's the difference between these two unique systems of measurement? First, let's begin with the metric system. Before the adoption of this system, every European nation had a different system of measurement, and consequently, it was difficult for merchants to conduct business internationally. Why not just adopt a universal system of measurement? Bam! Problem solved. Well, the idea of creating a universal system of measurement based on the decimal system had been around in Europe since 1586, but it was not until the French Revolution that a logical decimal-based system of measurement was adopted. By 1799, the French had designed a decimal-based system of measurement and officially adopted this system the same year on December 10th. The spread of the metric system began with the Napoleonic Conquest in 1812, and later spread through European colonialism of Asia and Africa in the 19th century. Alright, now that we have some history, let's discuss what the metric system actually means and why it matters that it is a decimal-based system. The metric system offers a host of units for measuring different aspects of our lives and all of it is arranged logically around a decimal system. For each type of measurement, be it volume or length or mass, there is a base unit with smaller and larger units for more precision. Since the metric system is based on decimals, this means that if a person wants to switch between larger and smaller units of measurement, all they have to do is move the decimal place one tenth or more, depending on the scale of the units. The base unit of measuring length in the metric system is the meter. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters, and it also equals one one thousandth of a kilometer as well. That being said, we can conclude that in order to switch from bigger to smaller units in the metric system, the decimal point needs to go to the right as many units as you need, and to switch from smaller units to bigger units, the decimal point needs to go to the left. To indicate the size of the unit relative to the base unit, the metric system employs prefixes. These prefixes are used in every unit in the metric system, as you can see in the following explanation. Milli. The prefix milli is used to represent just one one thousandth of the base unit, which means that one milliliter is equivalent to one one thousandth of a liter. It also means that a thousand milliliters is equal to one liter. Centi. Centi represents one one hundredth of the main unit. That means that one meter is equal to, that's right, one hundred centimeters. And one centimeter equals one one hundredth of a centimeter. Kilo. The prefix kilo represents the base unit a thousand times. One kilogram is equal to one thousand grams, and one gram is equal to one one thousandth of a kilogram. There you have it. These are just some of the prefixes used to describe the volume, length, or mass of a random object. However, in the metric system, you'll find an even broader diversity of terms for you to describe magnitudes properly. Thus, in order to describe the volume, length, or mass of any object, you can use all these prefixes. They will help you enormously. Now let's head into the imperial measurement system. This system is also known as the British Imperial System because it was introduced by the British Weights and Measurements Act of 1824, which was a parliamentary procedure done to define the measurement system that would be used in the United Kingdom and other British colonies. Although historians have found many other acts related to the British measurement system, which date back to the 10th century, this has shown evidence that the British imperial units evolved from Roman, Celtic, Saxon, and other local units in the Middle Ages. 
The system also faced a transformation before it was adopted by some British colonies, including the United States, Canada, and India, among whatever other territories they had claimed. The Imperial system includes many different units to measure length, area, volume, and mass. For example, the length of an object to be measured by those, inches, feet, yards, chains, furlongs, miles, and leagues. The Imperial system also included units to measure maritime lengths, like fathoms, cables, and nautical miles. On the other hand, while the metric system includes square units, or square kilometers to measure an area, the imperial system allows us to use perch, rood, and acre. If you want to know the volume of an object, you may use liquid ounce, gill, pint, quart, and gallon. And finally, to measure mass, you simply need to utilize ounces, pounds, or tons, among other units. In terms of gravitational units, the slug is also in the list. And there you have it. The difference in these systems is both political and scientific. While the general consensus is that the metric system is more logical, there will be significant costs switching over Liberia, Myanmar, and the United States to the metric system. Although many countries in the past have done the same thing, such as Canada, India, and the United Kingdom. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, click the like button and share it too. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Once again, thank you very much, and spread the knowledge.